Andrew, go ahead. You got one for him? Yeah, I do. Um, we we're just talking to Coach, and something we've talked about before, but the reverence you have for this program and the names of the people that you're associated with. I know that you're in the midst of the season, you're probably not going to come over it too much, but in a non post game mindset where you are right now, kind of put into words the fact that you are with some of the best ever and you have a chance to continue climbing. In fact, at your current rate, I think you'll end up between <coughs> Antoine Jameson and Brad Doherty in all time points. Yeah, well, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's something I never would imagine. I kind of just came here not really knowing what to expect, but. I mean, every summer I just worked hard and got better and got better. So I guess it's a testament to my hard work, and I mean, I'm excited for it. When you think of the hard work, um, you, you've been open about how tough things were your freshman year and how inconsistent they were. Was, where was the point in time where you realized, okay, you're now in position that if you stay here four years, you can achieve some significant things personally? Yeah, well, I mean, I'd probably say uh, the day after the first season was over with, I really just told myself, like, I was just going to give my all for however long I was here and just give the best, and I know if I did that, I'd be pretty good. How bad do you want to break the rebound record in Chapel Hill at the state? Because <laughs> it's going to be tight. It could be tight. Yeah, nah, um, I'm definitely going for it. Um, it sucks that I went out to the UVA game because then I probably could have coasted into it, but <laughs> I got to really push it tomorrow, and that's definitely what I'm going for. Obviously, to win first, but... I want to get the rebound record and a double double record on that day versus doing it in Syracuse when nobody be paying attention. So. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you been hearing from people as you pass them? Like, have you know any of the former guys reached out to you? That... Yeah, um, this summer Antoine Jameson, he was here. He was messing with me a little bit, talking a little trash to me and stuff. So that's one of the guys because obviously he's one of the greatest players to play here, rebounders and scorers. So. I heard from him. I really, I haven't seen T. Hands recently, but I'm gonna definitely mess with him a little bit. And then my coaches, when I pass them, and obviously Big May, they always mess with me about it. So. What did Jameson say? Um, I really don't remember, but I mean, it probably was something along the lines of "I'll never be as good as him" or something like that. <laughs> how, how did you check in? Mm -hmm. Did you say anything about it? I said something to him yesterday about it. I told him I passed him. I'm pretty sure it was in less games too. So. You know about it. <laughs> how, how do you, do you go into a game like you need 17 tomorrow, so will you check in at some point to see how many you have? Do you actually count while you're doing it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be looking the whole time. I mean, it's a human thing to do. I, I want to get it and I want to be able to do it at home, so it's something I'll be chasing for sure. And it's not like I'm out there chasing points. I mean, rebounds, that's effort thing, so I think that's something that you should want to chase. Hubert mentioned the Virginia game at home last year as sort of like a light bulb moment for you when you realized you could be a, a, a dominant all ACC caliber player. Was that sort of, is that what you thought as well? That was like your moment when you thought, man, this could really, could really turn out? Honestly, I'd probably say uh, my second year for me, just because we were so deep of a team, but I just thought like my second year, I just knew how good I was. And obviously we had so much talent, so we had to play a lot of guys. But like, I knew the next year, like going into my third year, I would have a really big year just because I did all that in like such a small amount of playing time just because we had so many great beers. And I just knew like, I was watching other guys around the country and I'm like, I know I'm a lot better than them. But obviously I didn't have as much of the opportunity just because we were so talented. Is Armando, is rebounding because of the dirty work it requires, is that something you have to learn to like? Or do you think that was always in you? I think it was something that was always in me because I really don't think I'm doing anything special. Like, when I go out there, like, I'm trying to play hard, but I'm not like, I don't, I don't know, I guess it's just something I don't think about. I just do it because I don't think I do anything special. I just, I guess I got good, good anticipation and just in the right time at all times. I know you're not, you don't have to name every name, but like, when you think of the best bigs, Carolina history. Who are the guys that first come to mind for you? Uh, Tyler Hansborough, Sean May, Antoine Jameson, Sam Perkins, mm. Mm, Brendan Haywood, John Henson. I know I'm missing somebody badly. Probably Mitch Kupchak. Cunningham. That's a good one. You passed him. Cunningham. Yeah. I passed him. He was uh, here 
at that game too, so that was pretty good to pass him too. I would have said something to him if I saw him too. Remember you shouted out Isaiah Hicks on Twitter. Um, yeah, that was probably my favorite player to watch just because I liked the way he played. I thought it was pretty cool just seeing how he would like get the ball at the top of the key and beat other big men off the dribble and score. So that was something that I always tried to take him and something that I like to do occasionally. So he was definitely probably one of my favorite bigs to watch. You, you mentioned Hansborough earlier, Tyler Hansborough earlier. Do you have any sort of relationship with him? Because he's been around the team pretty much ever since you've been here. Yeah, I mean, I can remember my first time playing against him. I really didn't understand, like, how physical he was as a player and stuff. And I, like, I was kind of, like, in his grill and being trying to be physical with him. And then I ended up having to go to the hospital. So that's when I kind of <laughs> realized, like, playing against him is serious. What happened with that? Um... I had to get stitches in my mouth here, like busting my mouth all open and shit in my teeth and all that. So, man. Was that before your freshman year? That was uh, freshman year. Yeah, it was during the summer. So then then I quickly realized, like, when I'm playing against him, I was just chill out. I mean, what, you, what happened, Armando? Like, what do you, like, hit you with a forearm? Like, I mean, yeah, it was unintentionally, but it's just like, y'all know how he played. Like, he one of those guys where he catch the ball and you in his cylinder, he trying to go through your face, so... I quickly realized, like, kind of back off him and give him his space. <laughs> Did he apologize at all? Like, oh, you know, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> you joined a long list of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how do you sort of square these individual accomplishments with the team? I mean, obviously it's great that you're yeah. going to have your name, you know, forever sort of in, in Carolina history, but how do you sort of value that compared to a team accomplishments and wins and those sorts of things? Yeah, well, I mean, I would say just kind of where I'm at with all those accomplishments. I knew it was something that I would get at some point in the season, so it wasn't nothing like I was kind of chasing because I knew it would eventually come. So I think that's just the luxury of all that. And I mean, really, like I said, my main goal this year is just to get back to the Final Four and win a championship, really. Can you give us a scouting report of DJ Burns? Uh, yeah, I've been playing against him since the fourth grade. I mean, he a big guy. <laughs> that's that's really what I can say. <laughs> yeah, nah, he's 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 huge. So what I is the challenge of, of dealing with a guy like that who's so effective at getting position? He doesn't have to lower his shoulder. He's by virtue of going straight up, he's getting separation. Well, I mean, luckily I'm pretty strong, so I think I'll be good. I just gotta just not really get in foul trouble. And I mean, he is crafty. He got good footwork. He can pass the ball, so it will be fine. <laughs> I don't see the kid right there. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you feeling physically right now? Physically, I'm getting better and better. I've been, you know, just attacking it every day. And, I mean, Saturday, I think I'll be at an even better place than I was on Tuesday. And, I mean, I thought I played pretty good on Tuesday. And Quentin Post, he won, I think, one of the most underrated bigs just in the country because he got a lot of stuff he can do. And him coming off an injury, he getting even more and more healthy. And I think on Tuesday, he showed how really good he was. So, I'm getting better and better. Was he talking junk to you in an accent? Yeah, <laughs> he was. I was just kind of poking fun at him, but I guess he didn't take light of it, so it was all good, though. Uh, Coach Davis said that he talked to um, Pete Nance about being more aggressive. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see Pete do to, to be more of an impact player on offense? Yeah, I mean, I told him in the press conference, I mean, not in the press conference, I told him actually after practice yesterday, I was just like, we just need you to be more aggressive and just don't feel bad about taking shots and looking for your shot because I'm like everybody else doing that so <laughs> I won't feel bad and he said he got me so we're going to see on Saturday. I mean nobody's going to complain if he take a lot of shots. That's the type of coach Coach Davis is. He just wants everybody to be aggressive and just instill that confidence in him and he is a great player so once we get him just taking more and more volume shots specifically like in the mid post and the post I mean I think that's really when you'll really start to see us trend up even more. Is he too nice on Pete? You said, is he too nice? Yeah, I mean, sometimes is he too nice? Um, or thoughtful? I don't know. I guess you could say that. I mean, he's a really good guy. He went to Northwestern, so it's a good school, high character kid, so I think that's just more what it is. You, you mentioned how, obviously, you're going to be chasing it. Like, are Caleb and RJ and Pete, are they all aware that, you know, if there's a, a jump ball, you need, they need to, you know, Put your hand a little bit? Nah, they're going to probably still try to get the rebound, but I'm going to make sure I go get it. Uh, last game, I gave a few rebounds away, but this next game, I won't. Do you guys ever play pickup with the NC State guys? Nah. Uh -uh. <coughs> nope. Uh -huh. All right. Cool. Thanks, Thank you.